Coffee Break Italian, Season 1, Episode 18. Buongiorno a tutti e benvenuti a Coffee Break Italian. Io sono Mark. Ciao a tutti, ben ritrovati. Sono Francesca. Buongiorno, sono Katie. Allora, come stiamo oggi? Io sto benissimo, c'è il sole. C'è il sole, la prima volta. <laughs> It is the first time that the sun is shining when we have been recording this year, I believe, in Scotland. Uh, the, the weather has not been good at all. Katie, come stai? Sì, non c'è male, grazie. E tu? Sì, grazie, non c'è male. Sono contento perché c'è il sole, come ha detto Francesca. Before we begin this lesson, I would like to take this opportunity to thank those of you who have left reviews on iTunes. It's fantastic to see these reviews and to know that you're enjoying the lessons. Of course, there's iTunes, there's also Stitcher, and you can obviously leave messages on Facebook, on Twitter, or indeed on our website at coffeebreakitalian.com. Allora, oggi parliamo di... Di un po' di tutto. Sì, we're going to be talking a little bit about lots of things. We're going to be covering directions, we're going to be looking more at opening times, and indeed we're going to be looking at a very useful question form, which you'll be able to use in lots of situations. Allora, iniziamo. Iniziamo. Can we talk a little bit more about opening and closing times today, please? Absolutely. Anything um, in particular you're thinking about? Well, it might be useful to know how to say half past or quarter past, for example. Indeed, because not all shops and services open exactly on the hour. Indeed. So that is a very good point. So let's go back and think a little more about our sentences that we learned last time about when does something open and when does something close. So, for example, we could ask what time does the shop open at or at what time does the shop open Katie, can you remember how to say that? Mm, a che ora apre il negozio? Okay, molto bene. A che ora apre il negozio? Okay, and we also learned how to say at what time does the castle close, for example. Mm, that would be a che ora chiude il castello? Perfetto. A che ora chiude il castello? Okay, so we can now say, we can already answer... The castle closes at nine o'clock, for example. Katie, how would you say that? We'll give our listeners some time to think about this first. So, the castle closes at nine o'clock. Il castello chiude alle nove. Molto bene. Il castello chiude alle nove. Okay, so let's add something to that. Let's say that the castle closes at half past nine. Okay, Francesca, can you help us with this? Sì, il castello chiude alle nove e mezza, or alle nove e mezzo. Okay, we've got two options there. So you would say alle nove and then add in and half. So you can either say e mezzo mm -hmm. or e mezza. Sì. So alle nove e mezzo or alle nove e mezza. Perfetto. Okay, so Katie, how would you say then the castle closes at half past nine? Il castello chiude alle nove e mezzo. Perfetto. Now, one thing to mention here for anyone who is who has experienced learning German, il tedesco, because of course in German, half past nine in English is a little bit different because half past nine becomes half to ten in German. But in Italian, it's just the same as in English. So don't get mixed up if you've been learning German. In Italian, we stick with half past nine, half an hour after nine o'clock. Alle nove e mezzo. Or alle nove e mezza. Sì. Okay. Now, let's add to this. How would we say the church opens at half past ten, Katie? La chiesa apre alle dieci e mezzo. Molto bene. La chiesa apre alle dieci e mezzo. Okay, let's add in one more time that we could perhaps consider. What about quarter past? Quarter past e un quarto. For example, quarter past ten, le dieci e un quarto. Watch out because it's very similar to quattro. Yeah, <laughs> so quarter past four would be... 
Le quattro e un quarto. Yeah, the, the ruling the R in there helps. <laughs> quattro, quarto. So sí. quarto is like a quarter and quattro is four. Mm-hmm. So let's have the supermarket opens at quarter past four. Katie, can you try that one, please? Il supermercato chiude or apre? Apre. <laughs> Sorry. Apre alle quattro e un quarto. Perfetto. Il supermercato apre alle quattro e un quarto. Okay, Francesca, what happens if it's a quarter to four? Let's see. Okay. Le quattro... Meno un quarto. So, literally, minus a quarter to okay. four. Yeah, so we're talking 3.45 here, a quarter of an hour before four o'clock. So, let's have the tourist information office closes at a quarter to four. And I know that different people in different parts of the world say quarter to and quarter past differently, but we're talking about 15 minutes before four o'clock and we'll say a quarter to four. So the tourist information office closes at a quarter to four. L'ufficio del turismo chiude alle quattro meno un quarto. Molto bene. L'ufficio del turismo chiude alle quattro meno un quarto. How do you introduce a date? into that. So if you wanted to say, for example, the um, tourist information office closes at quarter to four on a Sunday, but six o'clock on a Monday. Mm -hmm. Um, If it's something that happens on a weekly basis, we can simply add the definite article, il, in front of masculine days of the week, and la, in front of domenica, of course, because it's feminine. So for example, every Monday, il lunedì, every Sunday, La domenica. Okay. So, in answer to your question, you would be able to say l'ufficio del turismo chiude alle quattro meno un quarto la domenica. And then I've forgotten what time Ma? you said <laughs> Ma, good, yeah. But, and I've forgotten to, what time you said it. Chiude alle sei la, il lunedì. Il lunedì. Mm-hmm. Okay, so il, l'ufficio del turismo chiude alle sei il lunedì, ma alle quattro meno un quarto la domenica. Sì. Perfetto. Buona domanda. Sì, bravo. Grazie. Katie. Okay, let's move on because I'd like to go through a question form that you can use in many, many different situations. And it's something that you actually already know how to say because we've covered the can you do something? For example, can you help me? How would we say that? Mi può aiutare. Mi può aiutare. Or there was another way of doing that with putting the mi in a different location. Può aiutarmi? Esatto. Può aiutarmi or mi può aiutare. So let's introduce a different version of this question. In a sense, it's a a question that can be used in many situations. So can you tell me would be mi può dire? Mi può dire. And then we can add any question on to the end of that. So, for example, can you tell me where is the beach? Can you tell me at what time does the supermarket open? Can you tell me blah, blah, blah. So, can you tell me a very, very useful question? Can you tell me? Mi può dire? Mi può dire? Or swapping it around using that alternative form. Può dirmi? Può dirmi. And then following it on with your question. However, to not to complicate things, but to enlarge your vocabulary, <laughs> what I'd like to also suggest is that there's a perhaps a more polite way of asking this question. It's already polite. We're already using the formal form. But we could take it a stage further and say, Mi potrebbe dire? Could you tell me? So, for example, per favore, mi potrebbe dire a che ora chiude il castello? So, what would that mean, Katie? 
excuse me, could you tell me what time the castle closes? Yes, it's very polite. Mi potremmo dire a che ora chiude il castello. Could you possibly tell me when the castle closes? <laughs> Darling. Darling, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were being a little silly today, I do apologise. Okay, so it's let's... It's the sun. It's the sun, that's we're what it is. We're not used yeah. to it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's come back to this, this sentence, this question form. Could you tell me... What was that again, Katie? Mi potrebbe dire. Bounce on those bees. Mi potrebbe dire. Okay, let's hear it from Francesca. Mi potrebbe dire. Mi potrebbe dire. So, could you tell me at what time does the castle close? Mi potrebbe dire a che ora chiude il castello. Molto bene. What about, could you please tell me... Uh, where is the beach? Mi potrebbe dire dove la spiaggia? Molto bene. What about, could you tell me what you are called? Mi potrebbe dire come si chiama? Good, and you remembered come si chiama is the formal form because we're using a formal version. Mi potrebbe dire come si chiama? Could you possibly tell me what your name is? Ma certo, mi chiamo Mark. Okay, yeah, the sun <laughs> nice is getting Nice to meet you, Mark. Us. Thank you. Okay, how do you say nice to meet you in Italian? Just double checking, you remember this? Piacere. Perfetto. Okay, let's use this new form of asking a question and ask a new question. Could you tell me how to get to somewhere? And to get to somewhere, we're going to use the verb to arrive. If you didn't know that verb, I wonder if you could guess that verb in Italian, make it sound Italian, to arrive. Katie, what would you say? Arrivare. Perfetto. Arrivare. Now, obviously, you can't do this with every verb in English and make it into an Italian verb with <laughs> adding are on the end. You might remember that we did cover... Um, they haven't arrived yet when we were talking about English language newspapers um, in a previous lesson. They haven't arrived yet. What was that, Francesca? Non sono ancora arrivati. Arrivati, also linked to that same verb. So we're focusing on arrivare, to arrive, and how to arrive. We use that word for how that we have seen before, although we've seen it within the context of how do you call yourself? What's the word for how? Come. So, how to arrive. Come arrivare. And then we need to talk about where we're arriving. And something a little different happens here. So, let's look at, for example, the museum. What's the museum? Il museo. And what's the word for at or to? A. It's a very short word, just a. And what happens when we put a together with il museo. Well, they become one word. We have to contract the preposition a and the article il, and they become one word, al. Al. So we get to the museum or at the museum. Al museo. Okay, Katie, with all this new knowledge that you now have, can you work out how you would say, could you tell me how to arrive at the museum. Mi potrebbe dire come arrivare al museo. Molto bene, Katie. Mi potrebbe dire come arrivare al museo. So you can run how to arrive at the museum quite quickly. Come arrivare al museo. Come arrivare, almost as one word there, come arrivare, run it together. Come arrivare. Okay. So can you tell me how, or could you tell me how to arrive at the museum? Potrebbe dirmi come arrivare al museo? Potrebbe dirmi come arrivare al museo? And you'll have noticed there that Francesca used the alternative form. Potrebbe dirmi, as opposed to mi potrebbe dire. Both work perfectly well. You sì. can choose. Okay. Let's practice this form. And we are going to change the place that we're arriving at. We're going to change the place that we are going to. And you'll see that the, the, the contractions happen slightly differently depending on the gender of the noun, 
whether it's masculine or feminine, and more importantly, which of those articles it normally uses. So let's go for the public gardens. That's how you would talk about a, a park in the city. So the public gardens are? I giardini pubblici. So when we combine a and i giardini pubblici, then we get? Ai! Ai giardini pubblici. Ai, 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 ai giardini pubblici. Haven't we heard this before with ai? I was thinking about una pizza ai funghi. Yes, we did. Remember when we talked about all the possible toppings for pizza? We mentioned una pizza ai funghi. Literally, a pizza at the mushrooms, which doesn't make sense in English, of course. But we also did una pizza al prosciutto or una pizza al... Pollo? Pollo. No, Mark. Grammatically, it's perfectly fine. Una pizza al pollo. Yes, grammatically, but you would never have una pizza al pollo in Italy. In Glasgow, maybe you can have chicken on your pizza. I, Not in I'm Italy. A, a, even I do apologize. Una pizza al pollo. I quite like a pizza. No. Okay, that's me told. Anyway, grammatically, as Mamma we were saying, mia. as we were saying, al is what you do with a and il, and then we saw a and i becoming ai. Ai funghi, and in our example, ai giardini pubblici. So, Katie, can you come back and say how, or could you tell me how to get to the public gardens? Mm, mi potrebbe dire come arrivare ai giardini pubblici. Molto bene, e una domanda per te, Katie. Ti piace la pizza al pollo? Sì, <laughs> ma mi non piace è la pizza al pollo. Al pollo. <laughs> eh, Francesca, ti piace la pizza al pollo? No, ovviamente no, non è accettabile una pizza al pollo. Maybe we should do a poll on, on the website or on Facebook to find out whether chicken pizzas are the acceptable. Anyway, let's move on because we were spending <laughs> too long on this chicken pizza thing. Let's go through all of the contractions with the preposition a. And the definite article. So we've got a plus il gives us... Al. So to the museum. Al museo. We have a plus lo. And that would give us... Allo. So we could say, for example, to the stadium. Sì. Allo stadio. Allo stadio. So how would we say, Katie, could you tell me how to arrive at the stadium, how to get to the stadium. Mi potrebbe dire come arrivare allo stadio? Perfetto. Allo. So there's a double L in there. A plus lo gives allo. And you can probably guess what happens with L apostrophe, for example, in the situation of l'ufficio turistico or l'ufficio del turismo. We have at the or to the tourist information office. All'ufficio turistico. So that becomes A-L-L, apostrophe. All'ufficio turistico. So, Katie, could you tell me how to get to the tourist information office? Potrebbe dirmi come arrivare all'ufficio po- eh, del turismo? <laughs> all'ufficio del turismo. Or indeed the post l'ufficio office. L'ufficio postale. <laughs> esatto. Why not? Okay, so all'ufficio. So that's... E L L apostrophe for the L apostrophe ones. It really makes sense here because now we're going to look at la. So what happens with la? We get a plus la, and that gives us alla. So, for example, to the station. Alla stazione. And notice that means both to the station and at the station. So, could you tell me how to get to the station? Mi potrebbe dire come arrivare alla stazione? Perfetto. And then, lastly, we can look at le, when it is the plural feminine definite article. So, a plus le gives... Alle. And we've actually already heard that many times, because that's what we use when we're talking about times that things open at and close at. For example, 
il negozio chiude alle sei, and so on. So, alle, at the, or to the. Or, if you were perhaps in a city where there were two main squares beside each other, we could be asking, how do you arrive at the squares? In this case, we'd be talking about le piazze. So, we could say, could you tell me how to get to the squares? Mi potrebbe dire come arrivare alle piazze. Esatto. Sì. It's not perhaps the most obvious example, but there we know exactly what happens with le. Alle, alle otto, alle piazze, and so on. Now, if we can ask this question, can you tell me how to get to the wherever it is, we of course need to know how to answer it, or at least understand the answers. So, we've already looked at words like sinistra, which means left, and destra, is right. Uh huh. And did we do dritto? Straight on. Yeah. So we can say vada dritto, or we might hear vada dritto, which means go straight on. Listen to that again. Vada dritto. Vada dritto. So go straight on. And if rather than just say left or right, we might hear turn left. Giri a sinistra. Giri a sinistra. Or turn right. Giri a destra. Giri a destra. Now, those ones are straightforward. We might also get other uh, more complex directions. For example, cross the square. We know what the square is. What's the square, Katie? La piazza. So the verb to go over or to cross would be attraversare. And in the command form, when we're giving a command or when we're hearing a direction, that would become attraversi. So cross the square. Attraversi la piazza. Attraversi la piazza. And another thing that we might cross would be a bridge. So, cross the bridge. Attraversi il ponte. Attraversi il ponte. Perfetto. How would you say, for example, take the first street on the right? To take is prendere. So, the, the command, the order is prenda. Prenda la prima... What did you say to the right? To On the, the right. Okay. Prenda la prima a destra. La prima means the first and there is no need to say in Italian the first street or the first road or whatever you take. Prenda la prima. So, prenda la prima a destra. Prenda la prima a destra. And take the first on the left would be? Prenda la prima a sinistra. Molto bene. Now, the second is? La seconda. La seconda. The third? La terza. La terza. We'll do the fourth. La quarta. La quarta. And one more, just in case it's a little further away, the fifth. La quinta. La quinta. So, Katie... Imagine you have been asked for directions in an Italian town and you know exactly where the ristorante is, okay? Your favourite restaurant, you're giving directions and your directions are going to be go straight on, take the third on the right and then cross the bridge. So go straight on, take the third on the right and then cross the bridge. Do you remember the word for and then? E poi? Perfetto. Okay, so go straight on, take the third on the right, and then cross the bridge. Vada dritto, prenda la terza a destra, e poi attraversi il ponte. Molto bene, è perfetto. Vada dritto, Prenda la terza a destra e poi attraversi il ponte. 
So there you go. You're fully set up for giving directions and more importantly, understanding directions in an Italian town. Now, we've covered quite a lot in this lesson in different areas. Most importantly, we've been focusing on asking questions and using that very useful question form, mi può dire or mi potrebbe dire, plus your question. So try to use that at some point this week in your Italian speaking or writing. Now, as usual, if you'd like to get more out of your Italian experience here with Coffee Break Italian, you can head over to coffeebreakitalianplus.com where you'll find more information about how you can access our bonus materials. That includes bonus audio for this lesson. We'll be practicing more of the words and phrases and introducing some bonus vocabulary in that bonus audio, which we're just about to record now. There's also the video version of this lesson and a full transcript with lesson notes of everything that we cover in the lesson. Again, you can head over to coffeebreakitalianplus.com to find out more. Keep an eye out on our Facebook page for our poll to tell us whether or not you like chicken on your pizza at <laughs> facebook.com forward slash coffeebreakitalian. Yeah, and I think Francesca might well be among the first to vote there. Of course. Uh... And you should also let Mark and Katie know that you don't like chicken on pizza. And so if you are on Twitter, <laughs> tweet your comments on chicken on pizza at <laughs> Learn <laughs> Italian. Hashtag chicken pizza all the way. Okay, that is all for this very silly lesson of Coffee Break Italian. We hope that you've enjoyed it. È tutto per oggi. Grazie mille e arrivederci. Ciao, buona giornata. Ciao. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.